Welcome to Broken Tusk Rising, a Pathfinder 2nd Edition actual play in the Galarian campaign setting. We're playing through the quest for the Frozen Flame adventure path. I'm Sean, and I'm playing Andreas Witchborn, the Human Magus. I'm Jessica, and I'm playing Zancath, the Halfling Fighter. I'm Jeanette, and I'm playing Jonesy, the Human Cleric. This is Josh, and I'm playing Corgo, the Human Barbarian. Last time on Broken Tusk Rising, Andreas, Jonesy, Corgo, and Zancath prepared the camp for a quick departure the next day by passing a series of exciting skill checks. It was truly the sort of gripping drama one just can't find on television or film. <laughs> they then joined the rest of the leadership of the following at Rockloom for the Green Moon Ceremony. They celebrated the coming of spring and were promoted to scouts of the Broken Tusk following. The Korid, Shaggy Shemvin, was named an honorary member of the tribe, and Awa suggested to Corgo that they felt it was important to butter up the hairy fellow, not literally, to keep him on the following side, as he might be helpful. Bacano was outraged, however, that he was not named the successor to the leadership of Falcon House. Just as he was shouting threats at everyone for failing to recognize his greatness, the celebration was attacked by a group of warriors with red markings on their faces. The only person who seemed particularly worried about a possible attack was Zankath, Zankath, was there anything in particular, maybe something from Zankath's past that made her especially wary? Or just recent events? Uh, no, no, there's stuff in her past. Nothing you want to talk about, though. I mean, nothing I want to talk, nothing I, Jessica, want to talk about. We'll have to find out later. In any case, I'm going to have Zankath start the session with an extra hero point for wisely keeping an eye out for danger while everyone else was just partying. Woohoo! <laughs> no complaints here. The fanatical warriors rush into the clearing, screaming horribly, carrying a club in one hand and a torch in the other. And they look like... Oh, my. What? Whoa. There's something wrong about his proportions, Yikes. huh? Uh, okay. Yeah. Th there's spikes and bulging. I think they're feathers. Limbs. Like, they've got, like, fur. Are they feathers? Like, or are they sticks? Got, like, fur coverings over his arms and legs, sprouting feathers all over the place. But does he have a head? He does yeah, have a it's head. It's really, oh, I it's see like it. small. I, it's hard to see. There it is. Oh my God. Okay. Is it fur coverings oh, I or I don't, I don't know. Yeah, he's, it's, it's something weird about him. He's got some tumors in his legs. Yeah. He's just supposed to be a human. He's not supposed to be some weird monstrosity. Oh. <laughs> I think they're like fur coverings over the arms and legs. Yeah, like there's some sort of arm wraps. Oh, I see that. Oh, okay. okay, yeah, you can kind of see it on his back leg. So he's got some sort of arm wrap, and then it's got feathers or something on it. And uh, he's got scarring all over his chest. And Looks like he's got that, that vine tangula Pokemon like wrapped around his uh, crotch as a loincloth. Sure. All right, now I'm seeing it. Great. And a torch in one hand, you can't see much of the club in the other. Very evocative. Very cool. So we need to go to the map. I'll make them visible. These three fellows. <gasps> and I will go ahead and roll initiative. I was just trying to figure out if I should be turning on the circumstance bonuses. I don't know. I'll just roll flat. Do you have any circumstance bonuses? It had a thing for Twilight Halfling. That would be a plus one, and it had a thing for Keen something. It's fine. I just rolled flat. Uh, keen is when you use uh, a seek action. Keen has to do with being hidden, with seeking hidden things, so I don't think that one would count. The other one has to do with probably my low light yeah. vision, uh, so I don't know that they apply. No. It's fine. So go ahead, and everyone, what did you get for initiative? Uh, Andreas got a 15. Uh, Zankath got a 12. Jonesy got a 24. 19 for Cargo. Uh, Picano is here. He gets a 22. Pretty good. And these enemies are known as burn bearers. And they got a 19, a 12, and a 10. And then Shaggy is here too, and he got a 13. All right, so that means first to go is Jonesy. Jonesy, these three warriors leap out from behind the stones with torches in their hands, and they're, they're screaming. They're pretty horrific looking. What do you want to do? Jonesy will step a little bit closer to everyone. 
Uh, stay close, everyone. I don't think they're here to party. And he will cast Bless on everyone. Or sorry, it's within a five foot emanation. Everyone gets a plus one stat bonus to attack rolls while you're in that area. Well, was there anything else Jonesy wanted to do? Uh, that was all my actions. Okay. Next is Picano. And Picano looks bewildered, doesn't seem to understand what's going on, and he runs off the map. Picano, you big cowardly <laughs> dumbhead! <laughs> Bye! <laughs> I keep telling you, he's the worst. And that means next to go is one of these burn bearers. Wow, that bless is just glowing. I'm working on it. <laughs> okay. It, it looks cool. Why would you change it? Do, do we have to stay in the zone to stay in the bless? Uh, yes, you do. Okay. I will be able to increase the uh, distance every turn. Cool. The first burn bearer steps up to Corgo here, so strides. And next... I'm going to use this ability called, let's see, uh, nope, can't use it yet. No, nope, I can't do that. So I'm just going to attack with a club. Oh, only a 12 to hit. That's a miss. And then he's going to make another attack at a minus five, and that's an 18. Oh, that's a hit, though. So, Corgo, this screaming maniac runs up to you flailing around with a club in one hand and a torch in the other, and you duck under the club one time, but then it comes back around and you stand up too quick. And it hits you for seven points of damage. And Corgo is knocked back a little bit, and that's the end of that fellow's turn, which means we are on to Corgo. How do you want to respond to this, Corgo? Okay, so are there? I only see three. Do I feel like there are only three, or do I hear voices from all around? Like, good question. So, we are depicting a mass combat here. There's stuff going on all over the place. You're dealing with a subset of the chaos going on. There are enemies all over the place. And Picano just ran. Picano just ran off. Hmm. I'll be having some words with him later. So, Corgo, what do you want to do? You've got one of these enemies standing right next to you. Okay, so. Corgo gets hit in the face, and his face turns all, all the way away from the guy, and then he, he turns it slowly back towards him, and that smile's creeping on, <laughs> and he that's his rage action. Let's turn that on. Cool. All right, so Corgo enters a rage. Oh, he gets oh. a 27, Ooh. and he's swiping at the guy. 27? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so that is a hit for sure. Okay, oh. 13 damage. Wow. He goes down. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Go, Corgo. Corgo just smiles at this guy, turns to face him, and knocks him flat out. <laughs> and he just crashes into the ground. Do you, what did you hit? You just punched him? Oh, his, his hands, his fingers, like, stiffen up in the, in the, like this, in the claws like that, and he, like, just rakes him across the chest. You got that, listeners? Just like that. <laughs> just like that. Okay. <laughs> they saw it. <laughs> They know. It's their fault for not joining the stream. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't give people any ideas. Support us now for $100 a month to watch us record live. <laughs> <laughs> you think I'm jesting, but if you're giving me 100 bucks a month. Like, yeah. I, uh, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Down for it. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So one of these burn bearers goes down hard. Corgo, any other actions? Okay. So the, the other two are kind of far away from Corgo. He'd have to just, he'd have to use an action. He's going to intimidate this one on the right. Okay. I just highlighted him. So that's, he'll do a demoralize. And that's against Will, right? Yeah, Will DC. I don't know how it works. I'm just yep. rolling okay. out here. Alright, 23 to demoralize dude on the right. That is a success. Frightened one. Alright, frightened one. Yeah, so Corgo looks at him and goes, you're next! That's it. That's the turn. That's reactions. He looks a little concerned about that. And Andreas, what are you going to do? Ho, ho, ho. Andreas's turn, you say. Uh, he is going to... He's going to leave the, the aura of Bless for now. Whirling his uh, meteor hammer, he heads up towards the first or the closest burn bearer. And he will make a spell strike. 
flame whips down the chain. Actually, we'll go frost because this guy's a fire guy. We're going to go frost. With the meteor hammer, a ray of frost, spell strike, shabam, and that is a 10 to hit. That is a miss. Uh, that's my turn. That's your turn. Okay. He ducks out of the way and then screams at you incoherently. And now it's the burn bearer's turn. You know what? I think, yeah, I think he's going to... So if you want to move your place in initiative, I could just drag him, right? Uh, for a delay? Yeah, for delay. Delay, basic action, it's free action, your turn action begins. You cannot use reactions until it's his turn again. Right. But if I want to do that, I can just delay. Yeah, and technically you don't have to tell us where he's going in the initiative yet. All right. Well, you know what? I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to move him, and you'll be able to see where he goes just so I don't get confused. Okay. So, Jessica, that, that one, I guess your turn's coming up. That one on the right, the Frightened Condition gives you a minus one to your AC, too, if you're going to choose who, who to attack yeah. next. Okay. It'll be easier to crit. <laughs> Andreas finishes his turn. Shaggy gets to go. Shaggy will, let's see, he's going to stride. He will use Hair Snare. Sweet. Which is a one action. Action? <laughs> one action, what do you call it? Activity. Activity, thank you. Which is a hair, hair snare. snare. He's going to do a hair snare, which is a one action oh. activity. Uh, his a target must attempt a DC 21 reflex save. Ooh. Yeah. Having Shaggy with you puts some of this on easy mode. <laughs> oh, he made it. <laughs> he rolled a 22. Boo. <laughs> uh, so Shaggy's hair reaches out a long, tangled length of hair. Uh, it detaches from his body and snakes around this burn bearer, but the burn bearer shouts an alarm ah! <laughs> and hops away, and the hair just sort of wriggles off. The appropriate reaction to that happening? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then Shaggy will also take a swing with a club. Oh, these guys were so tough till the beard tried to hug them. <laughs> I think that's probably true of most people, yes. Uh, it's all fun and games until a, a prehensile beard tries to grab you. Never underestimate the beard. All right, so he'll also attack with the club, and it is an 18 to hit, which is a hit. Plus 14? Yeah. Wow. Well, I'm going to roll the damage, but it's pretty much automatically wow. fatal. So that burn bearer goes down. So, so guys, I'm really excited that we have a friend with Shaggy. <laughs> I'm so yeah, glad geez. I let him sleep glad in my hut. bring the moose. Yeah. <laughs> now it's the frightened burn bearer's turn, and he's looking a little bit less confident now, but nonetheless, got to show off, got to impress everyone. So he steps up to Andreas, and he will attempt a... Torch and go. Bring it on. I'm going to tower and feather you, young man. And gets a 16 against Andreas. Miss. Miss. It says the burn bearer makes a tor torch strike against the flanked. Oh, no, that doesn't work. He has to flank you. Never mind. In that case, ah. he yeah, he just makes a regular attack on you and misses. There's nothing else really that he can do except try to hit you again. So that's what he'll try. 17. Also a Miss. All right, this guy is the crowd whiffing. Goes wild. Yeah. <laughs> it's just not he's not really impressing you very much. That's the end of his turn, and that means it's Zancath's turn. Zancath, two of these burn bears have been smashed into the ground, one by a fist, one by a club, and the third one is ineffectually swinging a torch at Andreas. Zancath draws her short sword and runs up to where she is flanking the final uh, burn bearer, flanking with Andreas, and she attacks. Ooh. Ooh. 24, 24 to hit. 24 is definitely a hit. Oh, it's three damage. Was it a crit if he's flat-footed? Uh, let's see. His current AC is only 14. That is a critical hit. Nice. Oh, nice. Oh, so I get another uh, D10. Oh, oh dear. Because that's, wait, wait, no, sorry, short sword. No, never mind, sorry, I was thinking short bow, not short sword. 
Uh, so what do I get? You just on a double crit the damage. Win? Just double it. Oh. Six damage. <laughs> uh, all right, so you stab him, and he stumbles back a bit, but he doesn't go down. Jonesy, it is now your turn. Your friend seems to have this well in hand. Jonesy will uh, raise his hand, and a beam of light will appear in the shape of a spear, and he'll say, Saren Ray, guide this spear, and attack... This last guy for a 27. Holy. <laughs> wow. Yeah, a critical hit. Hell yeah. You can roll damage if it'll feel good, but. It will. <laughs> 10, because it's a uh, crit. Yep. Right? Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. he's very dead. Sucker. You stab him with a spear, <laughs> and he cries out and falls to the ground. And you have finished up all three of these burn bears. Now, just to make you extra happy, there would have been four of them. If you hadn't turned so many preparation points. Are we still in initiative? or You're still in initiative, yeah. So then, Jonesy, you should use your last action to expand the bless. Uh, yes, I was going to. Just as you finish off the warriors carrying torches, you hear shouting from the other side of Rockloom, and a larger group of warriors attacks from that direction. They're heading toward the group of people huddled around Whippa, who is lying on the ground crying out, but they have to cut through a group of Broken Tusk followers first. A broken tusk warrior that you don't recognize, or maybe you do, you can give him a name if you want. We can make up somebody. A broken tusk warrior steps up to block their way. You'll have to race to the other side to help him and stop the warriors from reaching the vulnerable central group of broken tusks. And I guess at this point, I'm going to move Awa and Argakoa. They have moved closer to Whippa in the middle of the, uh, uh, of the clearing here. And on the other side... You see this broken tusk warrior, Rando. What do we want to call him? Rando. Rando's good. <laughs> Fred. Rand. Rand. Fred. Rando. Fred. Rand. Fred. Rand. Rand. It sounds kind of friendly, though. Oh no, wait. He's on. He's on he our side. Yeah. Right. He's That's on perfect. our side. His name is Frandom End. Random End. <laughs> Brandon, all right. Uh, let me add these guys to the initiative. Oh, there's so many. It's a race. That's a lot. Let's see. Where are we in the initiative? It was Jonesy's turn. Uh, the next person to go is a burning mammoth hunter. So this hunter will stride up to, what are we calling him? Brand. Uh, add him to the NPC sheet. Brand. Mm-hmm. All right. I mean, assuming he survives this. Have faith in friend. <laughs> so this Burning Mammoth Hunter steps up to Frand. He only moved 25. He's going to have to stride twice to get up to Frand. And attack with a spear. And that is a 14 to hit. Does that hit Frand? No, it does not. That's a miss. No way. So that Hunter has used up all of his actions. And Picano is off somewhere. You don't know what happened to him. That burn bear is dead. Stupid Picano. Corgo, it's your turn. You know this group of attackers is charging toward the center of the crowd here where Whippa is on the ground crying out in pain. Does it sound like labor pain? It probably is Whippa going into labor, yes. Okay. I knew it. You knew that she would eventually no. give birth? Yeah, you... <laughs> <laughs> I had a feeling. I was coming. I mean, it's the law of fiction that labor always happens at the most dramatic least part. convenient, least yeah. convenient yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. You don't put a pregnant woman in a piece of fiction unless they're going to have a very inconvenient birthing scene. Yes. It's Chekhov's pregnant woman. <laughs> Chekhov's baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay. I'll, Kirko uses three strides to get here. Wow. Okay. Here is 75 feet to the east or to the right, closer to about halfway between um, where the party was to where the uh, the mammoth hunters are rushing in, but not still not far enough to help. In fact, he's probably still he's still twenty five feet away from doing anything. So Corgo sprints across the clearing as fast as he can, uh, and Corgo, as you do that, another person steps into the clearing. Oh, son of a! It's Picano. No, it's not Picano. It's the baby. <laughs> it's the ghost of Picano's baby. 
So, Corgo, <laughs> as you reach the far side of Rockloom and you see the torch-wielding raiders hack and bludgeon people who were celebrating just minutes before, the leaders of the four Broken Tusk houses shout for their followers to flee toward the Gornok River. Distant archers obscured by darkness spray volleys of arrows into the fleeing crowd. The uh -oh. full moon casts a pale and sickly light on the faces of the pitiless raiders as they hurl sacks of burning pitch into the encampment. A short distance away from Rockloom, a torch-wielding maniac has managed to mount a mammoth and set its fur ablaze. What? The oh. writer's war cry is eclipsed only by the screeches of the flaming mammoth. And just as you get close, another burning mammoth warrior steps into Rockloom, carrying only a torch and a shield. She looks at the other warriors in front of her with disdain, then looks up at you and smiles, cracking the skin of her scarred face. And it's her turn. And she's going to stride twice to get up to Frand and attack once. She punches at him with the center of her shield, rolling a 17 to hit, which is a hit. And she does nine points of damage to poor Frand. Frand, no. But Not Frand. Frand is still up. Nice. So do we know that these are burning mammoths just based on the fact that they lit a mammoth on fire or were there other clues? I mean, we've seen a couple already, so they look similar. They look like those other ones? Okay. We did the taper thing. They have similar facial scarring and they sound a lot like those burning mammoths that you encountered when you were trying to capture the tapers. Okay, gotcha. But they could be in disguise. It could be someone pretending to be burning mammoths. Absolutely. That's what I think. Next is another burn bearer. So they're going to stride 50 feet and then attack your friend Frand with a club. No! Oh, not a crit, but another hit. Frand is going down, aren't they? Only four points of damage. No way. Frand is still up. Frand has the stats of a bodyguard. Then it's Andreas' turn. Andreas, what do you want to do? This is uh, quite a terrible situation. We're in ambush from all around. You said the following itself, which is like away from us, is also being attacked, right? That's right. Although there are a lot of people here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm not. It's not like I'm about to run away. But that means all our stuff's getting destroyed. All these little people here you see are just little decorations to suggest that there's a crowd here. Uh, Andreas is going to sprint across the field... Uh, and end his movement right beside Whippa, and uh, I think that's Letsua. Uh, actually, no, it's Hanuaku and Argakoa and Whippa. And Whippa. So he's kind of trying to get, he's trying to just like be a last line of defense uh, between uh, Whippa and these oncomers. Excellent. That's my turn. All right. Another burn bearer. Can't get there unless I stride three times. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to stride three times. Frand is like uh, Boromir, like holding the line. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, he is now surrounded, but that burn bearer used all of his movement to flank Frand. All right, now it's Shaggy's turn. Shaggy could stone step through this rock next to him, but it would only get him 30 feet, and it wouldn't be the shortest route. So he's also going to move 75 feet. That's as fast as his little legs will carry him. I feel that, Shaggy, I feel that. And he runs across the clearing... I don't understand what's happening, but these people are not nice. You've got that right, Shaggy. Zankath, what do you want to do? Uh, Zankath is going to stride three times. Wow. To get over, uh, so she's beside Caddy Corner to Andreas and uh, between the leaders and the oncoming people. All right. And that's it. Another burning mammoth hunter. The guys that look like they're running with scissors. He will stride twice up to Frand, and that means Frand is now flanked. Oh, Frand, you are super flanked. Oof. And super. make an attack with a spear. Ten. A miss. Frand is just ducking and dodging and rolling around on the ground, dodging all these attacks. It's very impressive and very unlikely. <laughs> <laughs> and... <laughs> Uh, this burning mammoth swings at him with a club and he ducks out of the Brand, way. Brand, Brand, <laughs> Brand, Brand, Brand. This whole rest of the adventure is just going to have to be about Frand, I guess. And that takes us back to Frand, who is actually at the top of the initiative. He'll triple crit. <laughs> <laughs> Take out three at once. 
All right, so he's going to attack one of these guys that's flanking him with his great club. And he rolls a 21. It's a hit. Yeah, buddy. So he hits this burn bearer behind him. Roll the damage. Five points of damage. Not enough to take the burn bearer down. And he makes another attack at minus five. 13 is a miss. Oh. Should he try again? Fran, get out what of else? there. Does he have any other cool abilities? His other cool abilities are not useful without friends around. <laughs> We're trying. <laughs> We're trying. We're on the other side of the clearing. Guys, I'm a bodyguard. He'll try to intimidate uh, the guy that's behind him. Oh. Uh, hey, it rolled a 23, and that is good enough to intimidate the burn bear that he just hit. A frightened one. Man, if I was a playing a bard, I'd be writing songs about this guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. The last stand of Frand. Oh, that's great. Episode title. <laughs> Nailed it. Frand's last stand. Last stand of Frand. Uh, Jonesy, it's your turn. Jonesy will run over beside Whippa, and he will expand his less. That's cool. I don't know what it takes to deliver a baby, Whippa, but if it requires an attack roll, you get a plus one. (laughs) She says, shut up! (laughs) That was quite rude. Uh, Burning Mammoth Hunter, the one that is frightened, decides, you know what? I think I'm going to take my chances with this other guy over here. And steps up to Corgo. And is going to make an attack on... Corgo instead. Attacking with a club. Oh, that's definitely that hit. definitely hits. Yep. Uh, and that's five points of damage to Corgo. Rolled a 24 to hit and five points of damage. And next is Corgo. It's your turn to respond. Okay, so this guy runs up and hits him on the other side of his face that wasn't hit before. <laughs> <laughs> he, does this, he does the same thing. He tur- Wait. Oh, he should he could have tried to intimidate first, right? Oh, he's already frightened. He's already frightened. Can I make him double frightened? Is that a thing? If you critically succeed. Oh, no. Okay, that's unlikely. Let's just slap him. I mean, he's already injured. 25 to hit. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Yeah, that is a critical hit. It's only a 24. You still have bless on. Oh, 24 then. Still a critical hit. Yep. Because this guy is frightened one. Yeah. All right, that's 20 damage. What? 20? 20 damage, Mike. It's crit. Take it and you like it. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. All right. So, Corgo Corgo turns slowly around to this guy, raises a fist over the guy's head, and just pounds his head into his shoulders. There's nothing better than being level one and having 20 (laughs) points of damage. (laughs) The guy crumples to the ground. Corgo, are you out of actions? No, that was just one action, Mike. I got two more left. All right. He, he just drools blood all over the guy that just <laughs> fell. He runs over here. This guy, and he, to help Fran, he's like, Fran, you idiot, you should have ran away. <laughs> uh, what does Fran's he, voice sound like? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I just I immediately went to like way too high pitched. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of where I that's went to. That's what I was thinking too. <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> hey, Gorgo, how you doing? <laughs> Thanks, buddy. <laughs> It. it like oh doesn't gosh. match his appearance at all. He's yeah. all like stoic looking. He's like seven feet tall. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to have really small like eyeglasses too. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Cargo's gonna try to help Fran with a natural twenty. Oh Yay! my gosh! Oh, cool. Thirty damage. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> Corco comes up to this guy from behind and again smashes the guy's head down into his shoulders, into his chest. The corpse collapses to the ground and Fran says, wow. <laughs> Jonesy, I think it's a good time for a nap. Corco has this covered. I agree. The woman with the long shield and the torch sees Corgo crush this guy into the ground and she smiles and she says I'll deal with you next and she takes a swing or rather takes a a shield punch at Fran with her shield boss oh and she hits him it's not a critical hit close 
And the damage is seven points of damage. Brand is still up. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Brand. <laughs> Awesome. Good old Fran. Uh, yep. Hero so point. Fran is doing. <laughs> uh, Fran is in very bad shape as a result of hitting with her shield boss. She gets to automatically raise her shield. She has another action. That was just her first. A- she has two more actions. That was just her first action. She will. Uh, man, might as well do it again. She'll punch again. That's a miss. Okay. And then with her third action. She's going to try to intimidate Corgo. Ah, no, not high enough. She rolls an 11. Not high enough to intimidate Corgo. She says, after I finish this one, I'll finish you. It's just taking a little longer than I expected. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not intimidating enough. <laughs> Andreas, it's your turn. Uh, okay, so I'm looking at, like, ranges here, and I can't get close enough to... Sp- I still have to recharge my spell strike, actually, so I can't even do that. My last action was not to cast a spell, so I'm going to I'm going to move, make one movement, standing uh, just adjacent, a little bit closer to Whippa, uh, but just adjacent to Corgo. I'm going to cast shield on myself. You're standing right next to a, a guy who is carrying a log for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> We needed wood for the fires. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to uh, cast shield and then enter arcane cascade. Okay. Which will give me bonus damage and temporary hit points. Shaggy. Shaggy is going to stride up next to Frand twice, stride twice to get next to Frand and swing his club, because that seems to work really well, at this hunter. Making one attack. Oh. A 25, Jeez. which is not a critical hit, but is a hit. And that's 15 points of damage. Ow. And that is exactly enough to clobber this guy down to zero hit points. Nice okay. work. Yeah. And that's the end of Shaggy's turn. Zenkath, you're next. What do you want to do? I have two questions. Okay. One, it does not cost an action to drop a weapon, right? Correct. Okay. Two... Uh, is there any penalty for shooting through past people? Uh, they get a boost AC. Yep, they're going to have some cover. Okay. Uh, Zancat's going to drop her short sword and uh, draw her short bow. And then uh, from the point where I'm standing, I would like to shoot at the person with the long shield, the big shield. Okay. I think that's around all people. I think there's a shot between Andreas and Actually, and yeah, Fran. I think you have a clear shot. Okay. Nice. I am not within Bless, technically, right? No. Not one, so. one too far one away. away. Yeah. Uh, and I'd use my action if I moved, so no. Uh, that is a 21 to hit. That nice. is a hit. She has her shield up, but you're just able to get around it and hit her. And that is six damage. She recoils from the arrow. I, I smile at her. Uh, she smiles back. Polite, friendly smile. So friendly. <laughs> so friendly. Well, it, was, it was not a friendly smile. Oh. It was a very sarcastic oh. smile from Zankath. Okay. She misinterpreted it. <laughs> 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 Friend is near death, but still fighting. No. Get out of there, friend. No, I got I to gotta finish this fight because I'm so tough. Save yourself. <laughs> we need you to level up. <laughs> Tax with a great club, a 21. Ooh, okay. 13 points Ooh. of damage. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Try again, Oh, my goodness. The Burning Mammoth Hunter reels backward from the hit, and let's see. He's got more actions. Might as well attack again, right? Just in case. Yeah. It's a good thing Friend wasn't too drunk from all that stuff. <laughs> that we. Uh, it's because we watered it down. It's because we watered it down. Because remember, it's all in all drinks. He's going to use his remaining two actions to raise Shaggy's armor class. He can use his bodyguard's defense action to give a plus two circumstance bonus to Shaggy's armor class. I mean, that's cool, Fred, but also, I don't <laughs> know that Shaggy hero. needs <laughs> yeah. help at the moment. I gotta watch out for my friends. Who is this guy, by the way? <laughs> and Jonesy, it's your turn. Uh, Jonesy will move up towards the log guy. <laughs> You're doing a great job. <laughs> and you need some wood. 
He will... Oh, can't hit this guy. I'm not close enough. He's going to hit the... The woman with the shield. The, yeah, the woman with the shield. He'll do a another lance for 27 to hit. 27? Oh. Wow. Yeah, that is... Even with her shield up, that is a critical hit. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Saturn Ray has my back today. You guys are rolling incredibly well. 14 damage. Oh my gosh. 14 damage. You take her out. Yeah. 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 Nice. Wow. Friend. Uh, Fran breathes a sigh of relief. There's just one enemy left. So this burning mammoth hunter screams, I will kill a friend and my name will live forever. <laughs> <laughs> no. And hey. rolls a 12 to hit. That's a miss. Oh, sucker. <laughs> I'm not done yet. 14 to hit. Uh 14 is a miss. Yay. Yay. And what else can he do? Can he do anything else? There's no way he can hit with a minus 10 penalty. There's no way. Not even God himself could take Fran down. (laughs) I guess he could roll a natural 20. (laughs) Not against Fran. All right, he's going to try it. He's going to try it. A six. Oh. Nope. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> this is the greatest day of my life. This is like the best battle I've ever experienced. I am so happy. <laughs> Fran says, you fool, you faced friend. <laughs> Borgo, it's your turn. When people talk of this night, it won't be about us. It will be about friend. Okay. <laughs> what's what's Corgo doing? I don't know, Cargo feels bad taking away this moment from Fran. I mean, <laughs> delay. I don't, I, yeah, I don't know. Eat another. <laughs> Do an eight action. <laughs> Is that what we, I think that it would be the coolest. Okay, so Cargo gets behind the guy. He's just 25 feet of movement, and he'll use a grapple attempt, which I'm figuring out how to do. Oh, that's really low. I'm going to. We got to make this work, you guys. I'm going to hear a point. You rolled a 13. <laughs> yeah, sorry. 13 it was too low to do anything. Try again. Like, you can't get away. Uh, 26. It overcomes his, what, fortitude? Fortitude, DC. Yep, so that is a critical success. Your target's restrained, which is better than grabbed. And he will also aid in <laughs> the final attack. All right. Um, right. He'll help. Uh, let's see if I can do that. So you have to make a DC 20 check. What, what what are you using to assist? Athletics? Yeah, we'll use athletics. He's trying to position him as he's got him restrained. He's got his, you know, he's got him in a headlock. And now he's trying to move him in position so that Fran can be the hero. <laughs> <laughs> be the hero we all know he want, he needs to be. That's right. A hero kills a restrained foe. Oh, but he, doesn't, he doesn't, still doesn't help. Uh, no, you didn't succeed, I'm afraid. And aiding. All right, that's Corgo's three actions. Andreas. Uh, okay, Andreas will step up behind Frand, and slide a dagger into the back of his spine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> no, he'll, he'll step up uh, beside Frand. Now hold on a second. This is the last of our combatants. He might be a worthy prisoner with information. How did they find us here? What were they doing here? Why are they attacking us? You there. Tell us. And I will attempt an intimidate on this guy. Okay. With my plus zero. That's that's a 12. 12. You do not succeed. He spits at you and says, I'll kill you all. I will take my last action to spit back at him. Okay. You're like, didn't your mother ever teach you any manners? No. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Manners are for the weak. I didn't know that. <laughs> Shaggy says, you're mean. And unless someone wants to tell him to stop, he just swings his club down on him. No, Shaggy. Oh, no? Hold on. Let yeah, Fran Fran's gonna... Fran took on all these guys. <laughs> oh. It's his glory. Oh, okay. Sure. Oh, I'll just watch then. You wouldn't want that blood on your hands anyways, Shaggy. So he'll just stand there. <laughs> Fran's the murderer here. <laughs> Zenkath, what do you want to do? They seem to have that in order. I'm going to step over by Wiffa and, you know, try to do stuff for her. All right. You do stuff. 
And uh, Fran says, finally, vengeance is mine. <laughs> <laughs> Stab me, will you? And he swings with his great club. Oh, no. Rolls no. <laughs> <laughs> a one. Oh, okay. Well, that's just a miss. Oh, fantastic. Hits Corgo. <laughs> the, his weapon's backswing trait gives him a plus one on his next attack. Oh, it does? Yeah. Wow. Nice. Okay, well, it's a hit. And it does... Oh, only five points of damage. But that is enough. So Fran swings his club badly misses, kind of trips up a bit, and then follows with the momentum back around, and then clobbers the guy who crumples to the ground. And that is the end of combat. You have defeated all of your foes, and really, it was much easier than it should have been. Showing behind the screen here, you had Frand on your side because you had enough preparation points. Mm -hmm. I should have also removed one more burn bearer, because of the number of points you had. However, with Shaggy and Frand on your side, you guys just carved through them so easily, I left a burn bearer back in there. Sure. That was relatively easy, all things considered. I think we rolled really good. And yeah. yes, there was an unusually yes. high number of natural 20s in there and criticals and yeah, that was that was nice. That's just what heroes do. Corgo went on a killing spree. And Frand wipes his hands. All in a day's work. <laughs> <laughs> You've defeated the last of the Burning Mammoth attackers. You look around at the wreckage of the celebration. Miraculously, because of how many preparation points you earned, only three broken tusks have died. What? Yeah. Seems very unlikely, but you've earned enough to prevent anyone except for those three people, three random people, from dying. Oh, no, it's Rando's family. <laughs> no, Rando. Oh. Oh, I'm so sorry, Fran. His vengeance tale begins. <laughs> <laughs> we will aid him on his quest. He can be someone's backup character. He's an NPC with a certain <laughs> set of skills. <laughs> <laughs> Those remaining at Rockloom speak in low tones, but they sound panicked. Letsua bows his head and raises a hand, waiting for everyone to be silent. Not in my long memory has such violence befallen us during what was intended to be a joyful celebration. My heart wilts with grief. Sister Cinder gave us strength to take up the fire and find bright righteousness in this dim hour. We must return to camp, gather our things, and leave as quickly as possible. As Letsua finishes speaking, the sound of an infant's cry echoes across Rockloom. The cry is followed by another, and then another. Good gracious. Whippa has given birth to triplets. What? It's because of my bless. Oh, no. <laughs> and, and <laughs> you all level up. Yeah. yeah. We did it. And yes. I guess we'll see you in two weeks. Awesome. Sweet. Thanks for listening to Broken Tusk Rising. You can help the podcast by giving us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, by following us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram by chatting with us on Discord, and most of all, by supporting us on Patreon. That's at patreon.com slash thehouseofbob. This show is possible due to all our patrons who get special zines, one-shots, episode commentary, and other stuff for supporting the podcast. Art for this episode is by Sean Makes. Audio production and music are by me, Mike Hammock. Thanks for listening, and roll on! You could actually drag this to your macro bar if you want, guys. And then, because if Jonesy's going to cast it a lot, you can just toggle it on and off with that. That all sounded very fancy. <laughs> At the bottom of your foundry, <laughs> there's a bunch of macro, there's a bunch of macro hockeys oh, like you're playing I World see. of Warcraft. Cool. Oh, oh what sure. Is this? Yeah. Wow. No, I thought I escaped you. And then instead of doing a measurement cool. on your guy, you can go to your token. Jeanette. I just did place five foot. Yeah, mm -hmm. but that won't move when you move. Oh. Do it. Do the rage. Why do I? I have such problems going so, to a rage. I'm going to go into a rage. <laughs> and go drag, into a rage. drag the effect rage onto your macro bar and then click it. Oh, that's so much easier. <laughs> I, I was really bad at WoW. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I was so bad. I mean, really, all, all of us. How many guilds can you get kicked out of? <laughs> <laughs> Turns out. All the guilds. <laughs>
there would have been four of them if you hadn't earned so many participation points. Preparation points. Sorry. Thank you. We're participating. <laughs> Good thing we were all here last session. Yay. Yes. <laughs> you can tell I've been in class lately. <laughs> you get participation points. Okie dokie. I'm thinking. Dangerous pastime. Yeah. Shouldn't do that too much. I'll get a migraine. Well, you're supposed to say I know. You know Beauty and the Beast. Uh, no. Oh, okay. come, such a oh huge, my! Come uh, on, right. yeah. huge Beauty and the Band, <laughs> uh, uh, Beauty and the Beast Disney fan too. Beast. Oh, oh, you man. like Beauty and the Band? Beauty and the Band. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking too much, you guys. <laughs> it's a dangerous pastime. It's a lot happening right now. <laughs> I know. That was a little shorter again than intended, but pretty action packed. There won't be a lot to cut. I think it'll be okay. I think we got some quality content. Yeah. Yeah, that was fun. Too easy, but that's fine. It was fun. Very fun. Now, will we have to have Fran be a recurring character at this point? I guess uh, we will. Yeah, oh, yeah. of course. <laughs> I say that we just, you know. Ditch Shaggy. Yeah. <laughs> End the remainder of this adventure path and just help Fran on his revenge quest. I'm sure the paths will be intertwined. <laughs>